Hey, it's me again. Last week, we left off with a question from one of our FPTV fans named Ramesh, who asked the following question. What is better among cornstarch, sugarcane, craft paper, and fiber for eco-friendly products? So, that's what we're going to be discussing today, folks. How's it going, everyone? My name is Yudash P. You're watching... You see. So what Ramesh has asked has major value for any company that needs to package food products and have choices in the material that they're going to use. Traditionally, companies could use materials like foam or plastic. As more companies are becoming more aware, aware, aware of the environmental impact of petroleum-based products, they're turning to alternative materials that Ramesh has kindly pointed out. Today, we're going to review each type that was asked and discuss the merits of each, and by the end, you should have a better understanding of each type of material and which will be best suited for your requirements. Now, before we get started, Ramesh, I want to mention cornstarch. I'm aware that cornstarch can be made into plastic-like formats such as these images and can be made even as a fiber product. However, for our discussion purposes today, I'm going to be discussing cornstarch in the form of polylactic acid or PLA, which has been a material we've discussed in the past. And also, when discussing these materials, I'm going to give you a disclaimer that whatever I'm about to share with you will apply to most of the products in that market category, which also means that there are exceptions that do exist, but they're few and far between. So that said, let's begin! Starting with cornstarch, as I just mentioned, polylactic acid, which is PLA, is made from fermented sugars and usually from cornstarch. And now for a deeper explanation, we're going to do a video next week of how PLA is made. So then I can say, click the link above in the future. Okay, these materials are considered biodegradable and compostable. And if they're disposed correctly, they will break down into carbon dioxide and water within several months. However, if the material is not disposed of correctly, cornstarch material can take longer, like decades, to decompose, and especially if there's no oxygen or light available. They're sustainable, seep, and easy to produce, as corn is the least expensive and the most abundant source of commercially available sugar, which is what they're made from. They ferment that sugar. And here are the advantages of PLA. They are food safe, they're resistant to food fats and oils, good for print applications, they have a low flammable property, they have a high aroma barrier, they're UV resistant, and they're compostable in a commercial composting facility. And the pre-consumer product can be recycled by regrinding. PLA can be great for visibility and merchandising, and can be made for various applications from cold to room temperature foods. So if you think about processors for cookies and farms, picking their fruits and vegetables, like that. Oh. The disadvantage are that mainly they're not designed for hot foods and they may contain GMOs. Not all of them, but they may. As in the United States, the largest producer of PLA in the world is actually NatureWorks and it's a subsidiary of Cargill, which is the world's largest provider of genetically modified corn seed. This is tricky because the future cost of GMO and associated pesticides to the environment and human health is still largely unknown. But that said, both of the GMO corn and the genetically modified corn gets mixed together. But fortunately, the corn is broken down and processed to such an extent that the molecular makeup is completely transformed and none of the GMO attributes remain in the final product. It may be free of genetically modified material so long as you can find certifications from bodies such as GeneScan, which is recognized by both the government and NGOs as a leading authority on food testing for feed and raw materials. So depending on where you buy your end product PLA from, it may or may not be regulated. If you're buying products from that come from overseas, for example, they have a PLA liner on something. It's been found in this case study at the University of Br British Columbia, where products that were lined with PLA, in fact, had other polymer-based substances embedded into that PLA liner so that they could provide better shelf life and barrier protection against hot foods, which is why they've banned PLA products in Vancouver. One of the biggest challenge is PLA products are not easily identifiable when compared to their plastic counterparts. The best case uses are in a closed loop system that you can find at amusement parks or casinos, sports stadiums, where no outside food or drink are allowed and where waste can be controlled and ultimately diverted from the landfills. PLA materials need to be composted rather than recycled. Like paper and cardboard, companies need to separate PLA materials and the regular recyclable materials as even PLA products will contaminate the regular recycling system as PLA products do not break down the same way their petroleum counterparts do. Next up are sugarcane or bagasse. Now they're stylish, certainly eco-friendly to the look and touch. They're sugarcane or bagasse products and they're rapidly emerging as an excellent eco-friendly option for a wide variety of food service location. But the trick is understanding how they're made and what certifications you should be looking for in order for the sugarcane product not only to perform, but to be safe and healthy 
for your customers to eat out of. The advantages. Now, they help reduce the wastage of materials after sugarcane harvest. So what they do is they take the harvest, and once it's done, they have the stock that's left over. They convert that into sugarcane products. Imagine 10 tons of sugarcane yields about 3 tons of stock, which can now be used for food packaging requirements. They are completely compostable and takes approximately 3 to 6 months to decompose, which is comparable to palm and bamboo products which in most cases also requires a commercial composting facility. But I am aware of certain manufacturers that produce sugarcane but gas products that actually utilize proprietary blends of additives within its fibers and can be backyard composted. They can withstand temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius, which I have yet to test because I don't think it's up to that type of heat without the aid of some substances, which we'll get into the disadvantage sector. But their main uses can be found for quick service restaurants and for takeout applications and they also have a heavy application for processors such as farms and growers alike to replace foam trays. Their disadvantage. Okay, going back to that advantage of the high heat tolerance I mentioned, that on the whole, bagasse or sugar cane products them themselves perform no better than a paper product without a liner would perform, meaning it would just soak up whatever it is and absorb and just flap out. But this means that something else is in that sugar cane product that allows them to achieve high levels of performance. This name of the disadvantage is called PFAS, which if you're unfamiliar, it stands for polyfluoral alkyl substances, which are used to achieve that water and grease barrier to retain that hot, greasy food item, but at a huge cost. Now, these harmful chemicals, which are also known as forever chemicals, are there and they never go away, either in the environment or in your own system, which now has been linked to causing various forms of cancer and is being banned across various states in the United States. And I wouldn't be surprised if this ban also came to Canada. Now that being said, there are companies that offer sugarcane bagasse with PFAS free alternatives with their proprietary blends that offer performance and sustainability. So I've left the list of the companies below for you to check out. The last disadvantage is that I don't find sugarcane and bagasse products to be all that breathable. Unless they come in a two piece format with a base and a vented lid perhaps, you may have some success, but for the most part, clamshells? I don't find them to be a ventable solution to keep foods crispy and fresh. Moving on to craft paper. Now, paperboard is what you think it is. Thick paper-based material that has certain superior attributes such as foldability and rigidity. Now, paperboard can be easily cut, formed, and is lightweight because it's strong. It's used in packaging. In this category, you'll find many other items that you'll have to be familiar with such as bases, weight, caliper, SBS, CCNB, all these different terms. And to learn more, we're going to do another episode strictly on the paperboard definitions. What do you think about that? Looking at the supply chain of craft paper, you're going to find companies that buy from various mills all over the world and some that are certified like FSC certified, which is the Forest Stewardship Council, a board that provides principles to help preserve forests, including our rivers and protecting the indigenous people, plants and animals, and of course, our future children. So we're all stewards and we're here to protect and love. So it's always important to ask your supplier that pertinent question. So the advantage of craft boards, they're made locally. They have various stock sizes available. They can be made sustainable with FSC certification, so make sure you ask your supplier. And they're compostable, where applicable, depending on the various coatings that are available, from the polyethylene, which is not compostable, to the Cascade Sunoco's Flex Shield, which make paperboard grease resistant, water resistant, GMO free, and of course, 100% compostable in a commercial composting facility. They're easy to brand. You can execute custom packaging design work easier over here locally if you're doing it, including the application of a window, which is required for cakes, pastries, or even salads. You can have a multitude of customization aspects, and from different types of bottom closures to matte finishes to even UV coatings. Cheese, man. Can be flat packed, dense packed to save on storage and transportation, low custom runs, lower shipping costs, and quick lead times. That's a lot. Disadvantages, labor costs to set up these boxes if it applies, and the locks sometimes are not as strong and they lack certain quality. And they're not as strong as pulp or PLA for stocking purposes. So Ramesh, to answer the question on which would be better for your packaging requirements, I had a chance to review all the materials against 17 different criteria. Now, I've broken it down into two images, so let's go over them quickly. But in my personal opinion, you will need to choose based on your food application and what you also wish to achieve from a functional and sustainable standpoint. Okay, right off the bat, PLA products are not designed for hot food applications, and the problem of identifying them between a PLA and actual plastic for composting purposes makes it difficult for me to recommend this material, unless, of course, you're considering this for a closed loop environment with cold foods or room temperature, which would make the perfect sense, and I would opt for a PLA product at that time. As for selecting between sugarcane, bagasse, or paperboard, they both have an even ranking for me, which is 88% is what it scored, but based on the selected criteria. So by the end of the day, 
I would suggest you order samples from your supplier and evaluate their performance based on your criteria and then make a call. If you can find a supplier that has a sugarcane packaging that's backyard compostable and that vents that checks all my boxes, that would be my choice. But I haven't found such a supplier as of yet and if I do, I'll be the first to let you know. Ramesh, I hope that answers your question, brother. Thank you very much for asking it. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of Food Packaging TV. Thank you for joining me. My name is Yilash P. Next week, we're going to be checking out an aluminum company called I2R. You won't want to miss this. It's almost like r 2 but it's not. Please feel free to subscribe, like, share, comment. We'll see you next week. Peace out. <laughs>